One of the questions I get asked the most in my comments threads is, how do you wear a medieval cloak? And my initial reaction to that was, we well, just throw it over your shoulders and pin it. But then I realised there are people out there who don't wear medieval clothing every weekend for kicks. So this video is for you, the cloakless of the world. And to make it, because it's nice and sunny, I went over to Heritage... Herit and to make this video, I went over to Hermitage of Braid, which is a lovely nature reserve just outside of Edinburgh, <clears throat> which you can get to really easily from where I live. It's got lots of nice wild garlic and a babbling brook, and it's all very pretty. And yes, I did this entire walk wearing my nice Irish broker, which are very, very good for this kind of forest walking, actually. They're just nice. So, how do you wear a cloak? Well, there are loads of different ways, actually. We get pictures in manuscripts of people wearing them in a few ways, but the most common way that you'll see it worn is pinned at the right shoulder, usually with either a disc brooch, a penannular brooch, or a ringed pin. I don't have a disc brooch or a ringed pin at the moment, but I do have a couple of penannular brooches. This nice one, based off a of find from Ireland, and this little weeny one. So, we're going to have to start this with how these things work. How do you use a penannular brooch? It's one of the most popular kinds of fastening you get in the Viking Age, so we might as well walk our way through it. Here's a piece of cloth. Okay, let's say that you want to pin this to this. So you take this, take your penannular brooch, get the pin of it, pop it in and out. Very simple, very quick, very easy so far. Yes? Yes. Take the ring, get it around the pin, and turn it. It's as simple as that. You can turn it a lot, you can turn it a little. It's up to you. And there you go. You want to take it off again? You move the ring, pull the pin out, and throw it away before it explodes. So there you go. So, general cloak wear. I mean, I wear my cloak in the way I wear my cloak, other people wear their cloak in the way they wear their cloak, and the most common types of cloak you get in the Viking Age are a semicircle and a square and a rectangle. I don't have a rectangle, I don't have a semicircle, I have a square right now. I'm making a semicircular cloak, but that's in the project bin. Most of these techniques work for all of these kinds of cloak. Just experiment. See what looks good on you. See where is comfy on you. So the first one we're going to look at is a dead simple, dead easy way of wearing your cloak. And this is one that you can use if it looks like it's raining outside. So if your cloak's already pinned up and hung on the wall, unpin your cloak. Like so. If you have a third hand, put the pin there. I don't. And then get it nice and square behind you. And then pull it over your head. So make sure that you've got enough material to pull over your head. Tick the two square sides in front of you and pin one at your shoulder however is comfortable for you. Introduce the penannial brooch in and out. Don't pin it to your shoulder. Move the ring around. Get it nice and secure. And there you go. You have an early medieval hoodie. We know that they were making cloaks with integral hoods. We know that monks were wearing cloaks with integral hoods. We don't know exactly how they were structured, but this works really, really well. And it gives you plenty of material to play with to wrap around your body so you can carry on walking in the rain or in the snow. This is my general way of wearing a cloak. That's my way of wearing my medieval cloak. That's how I do it every time I put a cloak on. Well, actually, I do it once. Then you can hang the cloak up, pinned exactly how you want it, put it on, and it's already there and ready for you to wear, which is a great benefit of a cloak. They're such a versatile garment. But you can wear it in different ways as well. If you need to rock it up, for instance, you're walking through a lovely wild garlic patch and you come up against some mud, you can just unpin your cloak, like we just did, stick the brooch in your face, ruck the cloak up over your shoulders a few times, and then pin it back on. Now, in Irish manuscripts, you tend to see cloaks being worn sort of layered in this way, sort of rucked over the shoulders several times, and they look like they're very long, unpinned cloaks, so you'd stop here at that process. You wouldn't then pin it, and you'd just be wearing it like an Irish saint from a book. 
And there you go. You have a nice short cloak so that you can go skipping and jumping through the woods like an elegant woodland elf. Unless your hands are meaty lumps like mine and you can't get the bloody penanula brooch to stay on your shoulder. They can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, it's just, it's, it's not perfect. There we go, I'm gonna get it any second. There we go, hurrah! Okay, good, now go scampering like an elf, quickly, save the footage, save it, there we go, thank you, good, well done, nice, very elegant, like a gazelle, bounding along. Watch your ankles, you've got bad ankles. Yeah. I was gonna show you footage of me wearing my cloak with it wrapped over my left arm, because we tend to see a lot of people wearing them with their cloaks sort of over their left arm. And this is something especially that you see when gifts are being presented. So you'll see holy books, Bibles, Psalters and that sort of thing being presented to a king with a cloaked arm so that your skin doesn't touch the, the book or the holy relic or whatever it is. And you can do that just by shoving your arm down and then grabbing a length of the cloak. It doesn't require any special way of wearing it. And that's basically it. That's how I wear my medieval cloak. I mean... There's no magic formula to it, as you can see. You just pin it however you feel comfortable. The other great thing about this cloak is you can use it as a blanket. This is six foot square, so it's nearly as tall as me, which means if something happens, like you miss the ferry and you have to sleep in your Viking car, you can just wrap it around you and get some kip. It's very useful. Good night, Jimmy. Sleep well. <laughs> Now there's no phrase of the week this week, instead this week I want to bring your guys' attention to something that I'm doing. I'm going to be running a 5k wearing all of my chainmail for charity. I am calling it the Viking March for Equality. I'll be raising money for LGBT plus charity Stonewall and that is going to be happening on May the 10th. So if you guys would like to donate to that, it's going to be a pretty tough challenge for me. I am not a natural runner. Then there's a link in the description and uh, I will also, I think, be able to put a link in the video. If I can't, then never mind. But if you'd like to go and donate, it would be really, really helpful. If you can't afford to donate anything, that's absolutely fine. If you could just share the page with your friends, with your family, with anyone you think that might be able to help, that would be wonderful. So there you go, medieval cloaks. They tend to be held in place with a variety of brooches or fibulae, whatever you want to call them. Ringed pins were quite popular in Ireland and the west of Britain. I used to have a ringed pin, but mine's gone missing somewhere. Sorry, Alan. There are dozens and dozens of finds of brooches, pins of various kinds. Uh, Penanula brooches, obviously very popular. You've, had, you've seen both of the ones that I have. They're both made, these two are both made of a copper alloy, so brass or bronze. Uh, they were also made of silver, they were gilt, they were covered in gold, they were made of iron. They were made of every substance, every metal that they had access to. We see pins made of bone. We see disc brooches. Some of them are really elaborately openwork carved and given bosses, bosses, decorative rivets. Like this one, which is in the British Museum. The Ottonians and the Carolingians used... Disc brooches, animal head brooches, animal shaped brooches, I should say. So fish shaped brooches were popular as well. Some of them had elaborate enamel work. You can get all kinds of brooches. Be careful where you buy them from online. Some of them claim that they're based off original finds. Do try and find one, an original that you like, and then look for a replica of that. It's probably the safest way of doing it. Uh, ring pins, you can't really go wrong with a basic ring pin. In Iceland, they were making these amazing pile-woven cloaks. Pile-weaving is basically where you, you weave in raw wool, so sheep fleece, into the cloth that you're making. And it gives you this amazing thick fabric that's waterproof and warm and almost looks like fake fur. In fact, we think it may have been used as a type of fake fur trim in some cases. Uh, the most of the cloaks that we see are depicted as being single colour. So just a piece of fabric. Some of them have a trim, so some kind of silk or other material trimming the edge. It's likely they were using things like embroidery, tablet weave, and brocaded fabric to make cloaks. Certainly bishops were wearing embroidered and uh, brocaded silk cloaks and copes. So if they're wearing it, kings and princes are probably wearing it as well, you know what I mean? So they could be quite fancy. You can also, where well, you see that kind of floop that I do, where... Um, in this clip here, I just take the cloak corner and I just toss it over my shoulder. Sometimes that is shown 
tied with ribbons. So you can just take the, the corner of the cloak here and the other corner of the cloak, tie them together with ribbons and sling it over your head. You can do that. And sometimes it's shown uh, done in that way. Sometimes we see it closed with a brooch, but also with this kind of corner floop of gathered material up over the shoulder. So there are myriad ways of doing it. There are myriad ways of, of wearing a medieval cloak. You wear it how you're comfortable, wear it how you please. The one way you don't really see is kind of slung as a bedroll over one shoulder. As far as I can tell, that's not based off any early medieval depiction. We have Picts wearing them crossed over their chests, riding horses. We don't really have depictions of them just worn over one shoulder like a bedroll. And I wonder if that is a result of later Highland Scottish wearing of, of, the, of the plage um, becoming the plaid, becoming popular, and people just kind of retroactively making that a medieval thing, but I've never ever seen that depicted in an early medieval context. If you have, please provide a link below. Somebody once claimed that it was based on a Welsh law, the Welsh laws of King Hoel, Hoel Var, Hoel the Good. I've read the laws of Hoel in the original Welsh, modern Welsh, English, and Latin. Never heard that in any part of it. That's not a thing. So, please stop claiming that. Um, so yeah, you can wear it like that, but... You know, kind of negates the purpose of it keeping your body warm, so... You're gonna wear it rolled up, fine, but... You have to tie it with stuff, so carry string, I guess? Or like, pen manual brooch it to itself over your shoulder? Like, just wear it like a cloak, man, just get over it. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it, I think, for medieval cloaks, early medieval cloaks, and how to wear them. They're pretty simple things. They're literally just a square or a semicircle of cloth. Fling it over your shoulders, it'll keep you nice and warm, you can wear it as a blanket, you can use it as a pillow. They're amazing. Get a cloak. If you haven't got a cloak, get a cloak. I made this one from six foot square of wool in, like, three hours, just hemming it with a whip stitch. So, get a cloak. Get a blanket from the charity shop, wear it as a cloak. Amazing. Bring cloaks back. Bring cloaks back. All right. Thank you very much once again for joining me. Please do head over to my Just Giving page and at least give it a little read, give it a little boost. That would be wonderful of you. And Tantra Nessa, till the next time, who will I'm a draw. Bye for now. Oh, I need a shave. Three days without shaving. He has become a monster, a ravenous beast, more wolf than man. I need to repaint my nails as well. Disgraceful. <laughs> That's gardening for you.